Please be seated. That's great. So we're having the drum roll first. That's right. Okay. Thank you all for being here. I'm Lindsay Kadish with the Center for Animal Law Studies, and we are happy for this. This weekend was great. And I hope it felt great for you guys and went smoothly and you accomplished what you hope to accomplish. Um, I'm going to be short and sweet and pass it over to Chris Green to talk about what's the exciting part. Um, he's going to announce the winners. And when you hear your name, if you uh, can come on up and we will hand you your award and we will get a picture as well. Great. Sorry to make you guys wait. <laughs> it's okay. Um, uh, I just want to, real briefly, we did a lot of thank yous yesterday, but thanks again for the uh, whole crew at the Center for Animal Law Studies, uh, Lindsay, and especially Liberty for all the organizational work. And uh, thanks to everyone here, and thanks to all the, the judges and competitors. It really, all your volunteer work really makes this thing happen, and it means a ton to everybody. Um, so I'm gonna, we're going to start with uh, the legislative lobbying drafting, drafting and lobbying competition. Um, first award goes for uh, best bill and fact sheet. And at his competitor number 3266, Sarah Hannigan from John Marshall Law School. And next we've got the uh, two finalists from the legislative drafting and lobbying competition. Uh, finalist number one is competitor 3058, Matthew McClanahan from the University of Tennessee College of Law. It's so fun for me to finally find out where everyone's from because we've got this blind judging thing going on. Uh, our next finalist is competitor 3688, Nick Jones from Lewis and Clark Law School. Uh, and I forgot to apologize. Uh, Nicole wanted me to play like the really agitated, angry staffer, and I know I was really obnoxious, so I hope none of you took that personally. But, and that was tamed by some of the legislative meetings I've had in my uh, former life. Um, so now the second place award for legislative drafting and lobbying goes to competitor 3799, William Lowry from Vermont Law School. Leads our first place uh, finalist, uh, competitor number 3722, Caitlin Shugart Schmidt from the George Washington University Law School. So coming up next, we've got the closing argument competition. Unfortunately, the judges for that had to race out to catch their planes, but they wanted me to thank each of you and say how very difficult decision they had. It was really, really close, and you see when the points come out. Um, but the first finalist for closing argument is competitor number 2283, Haley Kimball from Michigan State University College of Law. Next finalist is for the closing argument competition is competitor number 2638, Nicholas Seeliger from the University of Pacific George College or School of Law. And that brings us to our second place finisher, and that is competitor number 2790, Laura Delgado from Creighton University School of Law.
I guess that leaves no surprise. So the closing argument, first place award goes to competitor number 2870, Marco Rodriguez from Jar Marshall School of Law. Law School. the event I won in this room the very first year they held now and so it's good to see it go to a fellow Illinoisan. Um, so now, uh, I should do the two the just stuff I should really work out for us. Perfect, okay, thank you, sorry. Um, so for the appellate moot court competition, I think we were all blown away and even as a practitioner, I was like, oh my God, I would never, like, some total of my litigation experience is representing myself in traffic court, so I would have, Paralyzed to see some of that. Um, so the first award goes for best brief. Um, that is to team 1488, Gabe Hinnon and Nathan Haynes from Lewis and Clark Law School. for best oral advocate in the preliminary rounds, and that is from Team 1720, and that is Aline Dalla from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, William S. Boyd School of Law. <laughs> Sorry, you must be present to win. Um, and so the appellate moot court semifinalists, we've got certificates for each of those. Uh, the first goes to Team 1400, Aline Anello and Melissa Elpart for Howard Law School. This is team 1616, Kate Brindle and Christian Busey from Michigan State University's College of Law. Uh, if it's not going the way you would like. 
uh, and that initial vote is going to be taken most likely in the robing room right after we uh, adjourn for the day. So it's your opportunity uh, to, to use really strong uh, held argument skills and uh, trial court skills uh, to take that last shot uh, at getting us to do what he wants us to do. So I'm going to call on the uh, senior judge uh, on this panel, uh, Judge Lee Rosenthal, for her comments. It's a very nice way of putting me in my chronological place. <laughs> um, I agree with what my distinguished colleague has, uh, has described to you, but I do want to step back a little bit and say that all four of you should feel terrific about what you did today. I cannot imagine the amount of time and effort that you have put into the preparation, the polishing, the practices, and all of the competitions that led up to this afternoon. So I congratulate you on the commitment, the discipline, the time management skills, the ability to function with not enough sleep, that that speaks to. And to do it with seeming ease, with a pleasant aspect. You did not look like this was a version of dental surgery. <laughs> All of that speaks very well of where you are now. Unlike my distinguished colleague, I have a somewhat more optimistic view of your trajectory from here. You'll get better. You may not always have the luxury of the ability to sink this much time and to shape your schedule free of a lot of other obligations that will crowd your life, professionally and otherwise. But you will have the ability to practice, to learn from others, to observe, to continue to read and reflect. And all of those, I think, will greatly counteract the effects of distraction that inevitably come in practice and with time. So the commitment and the discipline that you demonstrated are going to stand you in very good stead to continue to get better in the fields that you pursue. And I cannot tell you how great it is from our perspective. We hear a lot of arguments. I sit on both appellate courts by designation and I've been a trial judge for a very long time. And I've heard a lot of arguments in both contexts. You guys will be fine. You will hold your own. You should not be, at least, you should not feel intimidated by the prospect of having to get up in court, articulate and advocate particular positions with confidence in your ability to do so clearly, cogently, with composure, and with a sense on the part of the listener that you know what you're talking about, you're credible in what you say, and you deserve to be listened to. And don't you ever if a judge says, is there anything that you want to add to what is in the briefs or in the papers, don't you ever look up and say, no. <laughs> I'll rest on my papers. There's a reason the judge has asked you the question. We don't make a practice of simply being polite. <laughs> so don't squander those kinds of opportunities and don't feel as if you have nothing to add because today's performance in front of us demonstrates that you most certainly do. Thank you. Taking up my position deservedly earned as the shortest serving uh, judge on the bench and so pleased to have worked with my colleagues for this opportunity. I'm so happy to have been brought back again to judge these rounds and to experience your talent your expertise, your excitement about the law, especially in this area. It's so comforting knowing 
that being first wasn't at all as daunting as it could have been. That you know, being first and then again last, you rallied and did a fantastic job. And I can't tell, and I don't know if I'll be told whether the four of you are on brief or off brief, but I can tell you it was seamless. And I apologize, I think maybe um, Rachel, do you want to say Morris? You were amazing. I mean, you were so deferential to us, especially when we may have created a mistake where well, we, we confused you. And it you. wasn't an accident. But you, you, know, you, you handled it deftly, like a true professional, just as you would if this were accorded with the circumstances, you know, really made a greater difference than they will. And I know they'll make some difference than they will at the end of this hearing. So thank you for that. And I apologize for any confusion we may have laid at your feet. No, I don't. You. <laughs> Get used to it. <laughs> Nathaniel and, and Gabe, uh, as a team, you made a, a striking pair. I, I, I would uh, strongly suggest a rereading of Triple, which you know we politely combine and we talk about Twombly in April. I, I can't think of, of much to say, Gabe, to encourage you other than to keep doing what you did today and what you observed your colleague and opposing counsel do. And in terms of how this will help you in the future, I think I sit before you because of my interest in, my lust for moot court competitions. It's still my drug of choice. And as long as you decide to take in as much as you can hold of this legally addictive stimuli, you will do extremely well. You will always know better than anybody else the strength of your opponent's position and the weakness of your own. And with those ingredients, you can't fail. It's just almost impossible. So again, thanks to you for doing a wonderful job of arguing here today. And I'm comforted by the future of animal law because of what I've seen here today. Thanks, everyone. I agree with that. Hold the applause for a second, although she certainly deserves it. Both my colleagues do. Um, I just wanted to make a few very specific comments in addition to the general ones. Um, Brian, I thought you did a terrific job. You set the table well. All of you had excellent courtroom presentation. Um, Brian, I thought you were particularly poised and um, kept composure in the face of some difficult questioning. Um, Rachel, I thought you too did an excellent job on that. Be prepared. Judges are going to be unprepared. Judges are going to ask you questions that are from left field, that sometimes indicate that the judge doesn't know where you're coming from, where you're headed. Sometimes indicates that the judge knows and doesn't care because that's not the judge's focus. And sometimes is a reflection of your confusion. It can be, but in any event, you will get questions. We've all seen it. We probably, at least from my perspective, I've certainly done it, have asked questions that were badly framed and hard to respond to because your first impulse is to say, that's the stupidest question I've ever heard. Let me rephrase it for you. You can't do that. So you're left with very limited options and you have an argument you have to get back to. You did a nice job at just that. It's hard to do. You need to continue to think about ways to do that, all of you, but it's um, particularly well demonstrated by how you handled it. Um, Daniel, I thought you did an excellent job. The one area of concern that I had about your presentation is that when I was hammering for way too long on that one question, you kept coming back to, in response to a point that you had already conceded doesn't get you anywhere. And that was trouble. I understood why you did it, because there wasn't a whole lot else that was clearly evident to be able to use in response. Um, but I think it would have been helpful to try to think of a way that wasn't already seemingly foreclosed. But it's, you know, it's a perfect example of the problems that you can get into in this kind of argument. Um, but you were excellent at handling really hard questions. And that made it, which was difficult, clearly. Um, and I completely agree with the comments made about our last um, 
oralist. Very good job. One point on the rebuttal. When you get up and say, I have only one point to add, that's really helpful. That was, I, th I thought you did a nice job on that. Um, and not trying to do too much with a very limited amount of time. Instead, using precisely what you had available and using it to good effect. All right. Well, that brings us to the announcement of the winning team. Chris, are you doing that? Uh, so, are we. Or do we do Twitter? Okay, sorry. Uh, so, we'll start with the second place finisher and then we'll announce the winner if that's okay. Um, so the uh, Appellate Moot Court's second place award goes to team 1268, Brian Buskey and Rachel Morris from Lewis and Clark Law School. Final award today goes to, uh, for the Appellate Moot Court, first place goes to team 1488, Gabe Hinman and Nathan Haynes from Lewis and Clark Law School as well. So again, thank you to the esteemed judges for their work today, and it, it means so much to get this sort of mentoring to, from all of you, so thank you so much for your time. And that concludes, and thank you to, oh, what's our? Sure. Congratulations, to everyone. Okay. Uh, I know some of you have to run to airplanes, but if you don't and you would like to stay for photos, we'd love to get as many photos um, with it. And it we'll be fairly yeah. quick at that because yep. A, we are, Efficient and yes. B. You also have places to go. Yes. Yep. Some of us also have airplanes. On behalf of the yes, on behalf of the Harvard Law School Animal Law and Policy Program and the Center for Animal Law Studies at Lewis and Clark Law School, thank you all so much. Bye bye.